Hello and welcome to another session of neighborhood training. I hope you were able to get something out of the last three sessions as well as I hope you get something out of today's session. Really in the learning process of this whole uh, production. So once again just please bear with the graphics and give us some input some ideas if you have any and uh, we'll try to make this better as we go along. Uh, today we're going to break down the Cordwood Landing development of East Falmouth. That's a, a neighborhood off of Old Barnstable Road across from the backside of Plum Hollow. Uh, the Roads within that are O'Donnell and Ashton, Nancy, Raffi, Antone. And once again, those are one of the further neighborhoods from the fire stations. So, without any delay, we'll head in and take a look. We work on our trusty Google Earth. straight in on their own. And then there is two outer ring roads here. And then there's these cross uh, roads here. And also this uh, section over here. And we will, uh, we will focus in in this area right in here, which can be confusing. But before we get into that, um, I want to just show the route that we would travel from Station 5 or from uh, headquarters. Headquarters would be a little different, but this is the route from, from Station 5, basically. Uh, we're going to be going down Rocker Road. Uh, old Beating House to Crocker, and down Old Barnstable through the carriage shop and Hayway intersections and then uh, into the development there. Uh, Mashpee, which we bring in on a line of response for party twos and ones on the medical and uh, for the fire calls will be come, coming in most likely through Old Barnstable Road this way. Uh, which is a winding road for them, so it does take them a little bit of time to, to come to development. Uh, before I get into some of the particulars of the development, I'll just point out a few um, aspects while we're looking at this view here. Uh, this line here, that we'll see, is the town line. So this development is right on the, the uh, town line. And I'll just zoom in there a little bit so we can see that this area here is the uh, town of Falmouth, the Mashpee line. These are in Mashpee. These houses here, Thornbury Circles in Mashpee. And that 
lines pretty straight right through. Um, this area here, probably familiar with, is the back parking lot for the fairgrounds. Just to be familiar with that when we are doing our fair details, it is um, pretty lengthy. It does hold quite a few cars. And uh, you'll recall that we discussed this briefly when we were talking about the um, Schumann Valley area and the uh, Coon Mesa Crossing. We were talking about the Schumann Road and how it, uh, there were different sections of it. And, and this is uh, where we cross over 151. So just briefly, that's the, uh, that's the town line and the uh, parking lot for the fairgrounds. Um, I guess this would be a good point to just uh, go over the roads that are there. Like you see them uh, come in. That we have O'Donnell Avenue is the main road we would be coming in. Donald runs all the way down through the development through here. The other road, the other main road here, this is uh, Ashton Ave, right across from Fellow Lane. And this is a section of roads here that I personally found confusing, and, and perhaps uh, many of you have as well, is where these all come together. So we'll, uh, we'll spend a little bit of time right here, right now, but each time I go through some of the other maps, I'll mention it as well, because um, it can get a little uh, confusing. So we come in on Ashton, Ashton goes straight through here. Okay, Rainbow, which is one of our cross streets, comes right across here. Antone Ave starts right over here. Okay? So when we come up to this intersection, basically it's a wide open area of pavement and there's no street signs or, you know, arrows or anything telling you which way anything goes. So, um, and the roads are actually, you know, kind of off camber from each other, but as you see, Rainbow is this little loop around here, okay? So Rainbow goes right across, even though the roads aren't lined up, they do go right across. Ashton comes right in, but bears to the right, and then Antone is the uh, bearing to the left. So that's where we are with that. Uh, the O'Donnell turn-in is not as confusing, obviously. But So we have Ashton and O'Donnell as our main entry roads that run to a point at the middle of the development. Our ring roads, our lane, which is the first right off of O'Donnell. And that's one of our ring roads that comes up. And then we run into, what was this now? This is Antone, right? And then Ashton ran right up, okay? So we have the lane and the Antone change right in this corner right around here. where the, uh, the two roads are laying in the end zone. We have um, now the crossroads are Nancy, it's a very bad graphy, and uh, of course Rainbow, which we talked about earlier. Early. So Rainbow's our first left, Rainbow, Raffy, Nancy. Road 
concept within that. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, something different here. This is the GIS uh, map view that we'll see when we come up on it. Um, we'll take a look again at that intersection. And this shows it a little bit um, better here that we have Ashton come in off of uh, Old Barnstable and the rainbow goes around in tone and then Ashton's right through. But the confusing is that the part is that these roads aren't all lined up to really show it well. So, um, the other thing that I want to point out is that this is in development that does have hydrants throughout the development, so uh, we're good with water when we get out there. Um, I hope this helps now to get that to the right map here and we'll be able to see it. So, pardon my graphics ability here. Should be able to just go right out to the last extent, right? But as I mentioned, we do have items throughout the entire development. So we'll do that in there about 500 feet apart. Sorry, let's move on. Um, so this is the town of Falmouth's uh, GIS. Uh, what I wanted to show with this, and, and you may not be able to see it from where you are right at the moment, but I wanted to uh, point out that the, the numbers on Old Barnstable in front of this development of the, the uh, 700s, beginning of 800s, and the way the numbers run in the development. If you come in, O'Donnell, um, the numbers run on O'Donnell right from Old Barnstable all the way up to its apex and also the same thing happens with Ashton. Ashton coming in over on the perhaps the Nashby side right across from Fella, those numbers come in, they sequentially move up through the development. And the same thing with uh, Anton and with Elaine as well. And the way they're set up, you try to remember that if you come in with O'Donnell, and all the numbers will be, in, as you're moving up, they'd be increasing. If you take a left on the rainbow, they're going to increase. You take a left on the Raffi, they're going to move up. You take a left on the Nancy, and they move up. Okay, so if you come in, you know, off of O'Donnell, which we do, and which way you go from there, the numbers are going to go up. You come in from uh, Ashton, then uh, we're going to be, obviously the numbers in Ashton are going to be going up. But if you come in, and the same thing on Anton, Anton is not going to come. So, so we expect you to remember where all the numbers are, but if you can remember which way the numbers work within a particular development, um, you can, uh, we can be a little bit ahead of the game. So, that's uh, roughly that. Um, pull in just to look at some of the uh, construction within the development. Typically within this development, they're, they're all single family dwellings. You know, might have a couple with accessory apartments. Most of them 
are um, like 99 percent of them are caves and ranches. So there's nothing real, nothing over two stories. You're either a story or a story and a half. Typical caves and ranches between 18, um, excuse me, between 800 and 1500 square feet. And so that's a uh, the typical cave within the neighborhood, typical ranch within the neighborhood. And so that kind of gives us a preview of uh, that. Now one thing, one other thing I do want to point out that we'll talk about on the Google Earth is um, some of the miscellaneous concerns in this area. The Beagle Club is not necessarily concerned, but it's a, it's a, uh, I don't know, I guess we call it an adjunct to the neighborhood. So this is the Cape Cod Beagle Club, basically it's a hunting club, not a uh, particularly a, a social club per se, it's more of a, a hunting club. The reason I mention it is they do, this club holds quite a bit of acreage that is uh, wild land and they do have a road and path network within this, um, their hunting club property. So for our wild land fires, you know, we'd be able to get good access to this uh, club property. The other thing is, is you do have um, hunting and tracking going on there, um, plus other folks using the property to bypass through. So, you know, someone could get injured, uh, you know, out on that property. And, you know, we, we need to know that that is, exists in that area. Um, I will go now to, we'll look at uh, some of the previews. The COVID landing development is what we're talking about today. Why it's called COVID landing, I have no idea. Maybe someone out there has an idea of why it is. I guess that's probably just what the developer wanted to call it. And as we stated before, our entrance roads were Donnell and Ashton in the mid 700 to beginning of 800 block of. Barnstable, our outer ring roads, our lane in Antone, and our cross roads, our rainbow Raffi and Nancy. The uh, responses, obviously it's in Station 5's skill district. We get Mashby on a line response, and uh, that's our fire response. The one thing that I did want to note you know, as we're looking at this, that the distances um, between the stations, um, station five has got three miles, which doesn't seem that far, yet we all know that that's the winding uh, back road that we cannot get much speed on. So it is going to take us more than six minutes to get out there. And we talked before about our flash over time and we talked about the, uh, heart times. So from station five to three miles, I'm guessing we're somewhere between seven and eight minutes. Uh, from Mashby, we have uh, 2.5 miles. A little shorter, but if you're in, in all familiar with their route from their station, they have to go down that back section of Old Barnstable as well, and that's that's windy. So I would say they get there approximately the same time as we would, as most of us know from having the line response, we get there about the same time they do. But the advantage is that we do arrive with two full crews ready to go, whatever we're doing, whether it's a medical or a fire. Headquarters, however, for the ladder and the other engine, I mean, 6.2 miles away. So, you know, I'm 
I guess probably uh, anywhere between 10, 12 minutes. Um, and the importance for that for is that for you folks at Station 5, and, and as we talk about these neighborhoods and the travel distance, it's not only our, our travel time, but it's our response time, the time that we get the alarm at the dispatch, to the time, the turnout time we get on the apparatus, and then our travel time. But the, uh, the thing that we do need to keep in mind is a big gap between 8 minutes and 12, 13 minutes, which means that on the Station 5 crew, you're going to be operating without your second new engine for about you know, four to five minutes, if not longer. So you're going to have Mashby there. And so you, know, you need to recall that you know, you're know going to be operating there before our other engine comes along. And the same, we'll be talking the same thing out in North Falmouth. You know, as we get into a lot of the developments out there in North Falmouth, that the, the, the few folks that are out in these outlying stations you know, you're going to be running the while before you know, the, your second two engines or your offices get up there. So you've got to make some good decisions in um, your strategy and tactics in that time period. And as far as the medics as well, you know, that you're out there at Station 5, you know you're operating at a code situation for quite a few minutes before MIG-34 is going to come. So take advantage of the fact that MASHP is there and we should be in good shape. Um, I mentioned before, there are about 158 single family dwellings within the COVID landing neighborhood. Any number of guesses as to how many uh, residents are or our neighbors that are in that area, but my guess is probably, you know, 450 roughly in that uh, neighborhood. It's against predominantly capes and ranches. Uh, the development itself um, was built in the mid-80s. I know that it was there prior to that. In the late 70s and 80s is probably when it was built, but it sat um, idle for quite a few years. And it wasn't until probably 80 that the development really got going. So the houses in there are relatively new, and that's that's one of the, the factors. So when we talk about when the houses were built, we need to be thinking about what the building construction is out there. And these houses um, being built in the mid-80s are going to be, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, You know, they're all wood frame buildings anyway, but they're, you know, good construction. I, I wouldn't think that too many of them have that, those plywood I-beams or the, maybe a few of them have the chipboard, but I don't think they, uh, they are as uh, efficiently constructed as we have some of these newer dwellings. So, they're going to be good. Um, they do all have basements as opposed to some of the houses in the Edmire and Plum Hollow development, this development um, doesn't have that. They are all, you know, for the most part, of all, all basements. None of them are built on the slab. So that's uh, typical. The other thing, uh, we do have hydrants throughout. We didn't have that uh, a few years ago. In the past 10 years, they have added hydrants. And at first, it was just the, the outer ring roads of uh, Ashton and O'Donnell that had them, but recently they've added them in the uh, cross streets of Rainbow Rafting and Nancy. Uh, want to look at uh, special interest. You know, whenever we go into an area, we say typical, typical single family, typical ranches and uh, capes, but there's always things, okay, uh, special interest within the area. Um, I'll point out on the Google Earth um, is Lawhead Landscape um, runs a very clean operation on the corner of Ashton and Old Barnstable. 
but it is a, uh, a landscape business within a residential area. It does have a couple of greenhouses on the property, and you know they're a relatively small company, but they're not a uh, you know pickup truck throw a lawnmower in the back of the pickup truck and go mow some lawns. They do have a couple of dump trucks, and they are running. I'm sure they've got some fertilizer on the property. I'm sure they've got you know weed killer. I'm sure they've got you know gasoline uh, for more quantities than you find in the home. Uh, it is a clean operation, but just keep in mind that, that we do have that uh, within that neighborhood. So, you know, if we did get in a fire in one of the greenhouses that was involving some fertilizer, you know, would we have to do some, um, you know, evacuations? Possibly. You know, right? We already talked already about the Mashpee line. Uh, we already talked about the fair parking lot. Um, I will go back on the Google Earth and we will look at some of the uh, significant wildland within the area. We did talk briefly about the Beagle Club, and when I go back to it, I'll talk about the uh, town well site in the area. So those are the few of the um, particulars of this development. Uh, let me just shoot back over here. And uh, we'll just pull in right now where um, this, the Lawhead Landscape Company is on the corner. And there's Old Bicycle in Ashton. And there's the Landscape Company there. Uh, I can't go into too much more than that without getting blurry. But as you see on the property, they do have, so they have one greenhouse here and I know they do have a couple of trucks you know a couple of dump trucks and there is uh, some equipment on the site so I believe at that point uh, and as you can see most of the houses are pretty much in similar size you know uh, they're reasonable there is one house here uh, that I wanted to point out that is pretty substantial you probably wouldn't be able to get a good take on it here but uh, this house here on the corner of o O'Donnell and O'Barnesville, if you're driving by, you'll see it. It's, uh, you know, it's a wood frame building, but it's uh, you know, larger than the rest of the homes. So, you know, the uh, square footage there is more, I don't know if it's got apartments in it or in-law apartments or what, what's going on there. So, but, you know, it's... It's unique to the development there. Um, all right, let me just go out here and I'll show you. Um, as we talked about the Beagle Club, this is the uh, that's the Beagle Club building that we talked about before. Oh, no, yeah, um, and their property running down through. Um, and I did want to mention as we look further out. You know, we have, we have crane wildlife over here where we talked about a lot of the, the hunting that goes on and we talked about um, the Cooney Mesa Crossing development up here and this being all the quail area. And we talked about the Cooney Mesa development. That's pretty substantial. It goes all the way down the hayway. So, but as we cross over, we'll see that the same thing um, occurs over line here. It would just go out quite a bit, but um, you see this whole area here, even into Mashpee, is, is all open. And for all intents and purposes, it probably will stay open. Uh, the Beagle Club people, obviously, they could probably sell their property um, and uh, put a housing development, but you know, the likelihood of that is probably not going to happen. And a lot of this area here is um, in Mashpee and Falmouth, and it's all uh, protected conservation land. So it's, this is going to remain here, and it is, you know, pines and oaks just like anywhere else. Um, so that Beagle Club property runs, you know, pretty extensive into uh, down into here. And you can see they do have some open fields, you know, within the property. Um, but I wanted to mention before that. 
the um, the town well site. It's a little bit off topic from from uh, the Covey Landing development. It's more for this neighborhood down off the Hayway, but I'll just mention it just because it's, it's significant and that it's in the area. Um, the uh, town has a well site up in here, so a lot of this is town property. So, you know, we do have, um, that will always remain is to be a town well site. And this property, this uh, wildland, as you can see, is pretty, pretty extensive. So we could uh, seem to get a good a little fire going in there. And this is a uh, old dirt road. so. There's really not a fire break, you know, in this area and if our uh, south west and breezes as we get could really be pretty extensive, you know, through here. So, you know, just keep that in mind. It's all through Mashpee, but when we do have a power line that runs through it. So we won't uh, spend any more time on that. So um, Let's just shoot back up here and see if we think that this other map here to go. Uh, I just want to wrap up and I just want to touch on that um, circle of roads. Here we go. Okay, so here we go, right? Ashton goes right across to this open area of pavement right here, which are coming off Ashton. You're going to go right up. Rainbow goes around that hook. And Antone starts over here. So no street signs, but here we go. This is the that's the log hit uh, landscape property right in there. And as you can see, we have houses are all pretty much uh, similar. This. This batch map should show be updated enough to show that we have hydrants you know, within there, so we're good. We're good with that. So, and the numbers, how do they run? Right? We come in off of Old Donald. And the numbers will just keep running up. And if we take a left on any rainbow, Raffi, Nancy, they're gonna move up if we go up off of O'Donnell. And uh, we come in on to Ashton. Obviously, Anton's going to move up as we go along. All right. So we'll just go back to that, right? Donald Ashton entrances out of Ring Roads, or Lane and Anton, Rainbow, Raffi, Nancy, out of Cross Streets, Station 5, Still District. Uh, our uh, response times all single family capes and ranches built in the mid 80s, hydrants throughout. So we're, uh, we're good. Our dispatchers need to remember that um, need to give good directions, but we also need to remember that there's a lot that goes on in driving a piece of apparatus and eight minutes can be a long time to remember specific directions. So the dispatchers remember Perhaps you can give a prompt to the responding apparatus a few minutes before they get there. If you give too much information right at the dispatch time, uh, the, some of it will get lost. So the dispatchers need to remember, when you dispatch, you always need to give a cross street. So if we're dispatching to on O'Donnell, you need to give a cross street, say O'Donnell off of Old Barnstable. Or Nancy Ab off of O'Donnell off of Old Barnstable. Give people an idea of what their neighborhood they're headed to, and then give the specific directions for the house, perhaps a few minutes into the response time. For this particular place, we don't have that time if we have, you know, a place that's really close to the station. But here we do, and remember we have Mashpee on a live response, and, um, and our other, uh, special interest within that area. 
So, once again, 